All right, well, th thank, thank you for uh, having me, and thanks for the, the, the kind introduction. Um, the, um, you know, I, I guess the, there's, there's a lot of things in the world today that are happening that are important um, and that deserve our attention. Uh, but um, I think it's, it's, it's always important to say what is going to be the, wh what's important in the long term? What are the actions that, if we don't take them today, will result in uh, quite a, a terrible future? And I think the, the you know, the, you know, t today's refugee problem uh, it, or challenge is, 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 perhaps a, a, a small indication of what the future will be like if we do not take action with respect to climate change. Um, so, so, I mean, t today the challenge is in terms of millions of people, but in the future, um, based on what the scientific consensus is, the, the problem will, will be in, in hundreds of millions um, and, and much more severe. So I think it's it's very important that we, we take action today to recognize that we are making a very significant change to the chemical constituency of the atmosphere uh, and the oceans, um, and one that is almost impossible to reverse. Um, and uh, I think, you know, when we look back on, on these days in the future, we want to be able to say that we, we did the actions that were, were right, the actions that that were important, because I think it's very difficult to say, you know, if you go, say, 20, 30, 40 years in the future, you know, what do you say to your kids or your grandkids, you know? It's not as though, like, the, <clears throat> I mean, it's like the, the scientists all say that these bad things are gonna happen. It's like 97%. So, like, say, well, to your grandkids, your kids, like, well, did nobody tell you? No, it's like, no, everyone was telling us. <laughs> okay. So why didn't you do anything? What's the answer? Um, I think it's very important that we do something. Um, so the, you know, th there's, there's things in the news like, you know, the nitrous oxide thing with uh, VW, and obviously that's, that's bad, but it's, uh, the, the CO2 thing is really the, the thing, what, what we should be most concerned about. Um, and if you look at, say, what is necessary for a sustainable future, Actually, you know, in, in one respect, a very important respect, Germany is a huge leader, which is in uh, solar power uh, generation. Uh, Germany is by far the, the best in the world when it comes to um, solar power. Uh, I think m even in terms of, a in absolute terms, but certainly uh, in, in uh, solar power per capita, by far the best. And wherever I go in the world, I say, hey, Germany is a great example for, for solar power generation. And I think people in Germany should be really proud of that. That's a great thing that you've done. Um, but it needs to be it needs to be paired with uh, sustainable consumption of energy on the transportation side. So um, that hopefully is something that will change, you know, in the in the near future. But uh, but you know, whereas Germany is really great on sustainable power generation. It's not so much on the sustainable power consumption, because transport is still very much uh, petrol and diesel. So, um, so hopefully that that that's something that uh, that changes. I think that's the most important thing that can be done for for climate, and and Germany could be a, a great example in this regard. So, so that's that's my hope on that on that front. Um, let's see. Um, and then stationary storage, battery packs, are also uh, something that's important because you need sustainable power generation, uh, sustainable power storage uh, because of the intermittent nature of uh, renewable energy, and then combine that with, with electric vehicles. So, uh, you know, Tesla, we're developing stationary storage with the Powerwall power pack, um, and um, we think actually uh, Germany is a very important um, market for that. In fact, outside of the U.S., uh, Germany and Australia are, Germany first of all and then Australia are our top uh, priorities. So I think uh, that will hopefully be helpful. Um, and then, uh, let's see, would, would you like me to talk about space as well? I'm not sure if that's, <laughs> okay. By, okay, by popular acclaim. Um, 
So the, we, we hope to uh, launch again uh, in um, a couple of months. Uh, so and I guess maybe six to eight weeks or so from now. Um, and then if things go well, we'll be able to land the rocket. And um, uh, although I'd be happy if it just gets to orbit, of course. Um, but uh, if, hopefully it can come back and land as well. Um, and that will be an important milestone uh, for space exploration. Um, because uh, ultimately I think a very, you know, we want to have a, a very exciting, inspiring future in space. And in order for that to happen, we really want to become a multi-planet species and a space-faring civilization. Um, and I do want to emphasize a multi-planet. Uh, you know, it's not like another planet, but over there. Uh, we've got to make sure things are good on Earth uh, and, then, and then extend life as we know it to, uh, to Mars and, and beyond. Um, and, uh, you know, that will certainly be a great uh, source of uh, security for life as we know it. Uh, but I think uh, even more uh, motivating for me personally is that trying to establish a self-sustaining civilization on Mars would be a great adventure. Um, it will be really fun and exciting. Um, and there, there need to be things that are inspiring and exciting. Uh, because life cannot just be about solving problems. You know, if, you, if it's just about one miserable problem after another, why get up in the morning? Um, but, but if the things that are exciting and inspiring and make you want the future to happen, I mean, that's, that, 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 that I love that. You know, that's, there need to be things like that. So. You know, there, just need, there need to be things that make you want to be alive. So I think, I think, I think Mars could be one of those things. And um, anyway, that's what we're trying to make progress on with, uh, with SpaceX. Um, certainly very tricky progress. Uh, but uh, I think we're, we're headed in, in an exciting direction there. Uh, let's see. I, that's, that's all I have to say in terms of opening remarks. Um, I guess we go to the interview yeah all right thank you verkabelt sich kurz noch, dann lassen Sie mich einmal ganz kurz was, äh, ein, zwei Fragen machen wir kurz hier oben. Danach darf ich Sie, wie gesagt, alle auch mit einbinden. Wir werden es folgendermaßen machen, weil wir bestimmt eine ganz, ganze Menge Fragen haben. Wir werden die Fragen bündeln. Das heißt, geben Sie mir gleich, wenn wir kurz ein, zwei Fragen hier oben gemacht haben, ein Handzeichen. Wir haben hier mehrere Damen mit Mikrofonen, dass wir sie einmal sehen können und dass wir dann gebündelt an die beiden Herren die Fragen auch weitergeben können. Ähm, You're ready. Yeah. Okay. Ich würde gerne, Sie haben es kurz angesprochen, das Thema Elektromobilität. Welche Unterschiede sehen Sie in den USA und in Deutschland bei der Einführung von Elektromobilität? Und wie schätzen Sie die deutsche Autoindustrie in Sachen Elektromobilität momentan ein? Um, well, I think the, I, th I think there should be more action. Um, the, I mean, Germany has some great uh, car companies, like some of the greatest car companies in, in the world, and amazing engineering ability. Um, but particularly uh, with respect to electrical and mechanical uh, engineering, I think also chemical engineering, Germany is probably the leader in the world. So there's a, uh, a, an enormous amount of engineering talent that I think could be put towards uh, electric cars, and, and, really, and really should be. Um, and I think it's just a question of making the leap and, make, and, and making it a, a mainstream initiative instead of a, a side initiative. It, need, it needs to be a, a, a mainstream program, not, not, uh, not sort of the, like the A team, the A team needs to work on it. Um, that's a you know, really important thing. And 
And I think the government can certainly, can certainly help by, by saying that, you know, emphasizing that this is important, it's something that should be done. Uh, so I think if, if the A-team uh, at uh, uh, any of the big German uh, car makers uh, work on electric cars, it'll be a great outcome. Herr Gabriel, für die Umsetzung der Energiewende, welche Rolle spielt Elektromobilität? Das ist natürlich eine Riesenchance, weil die Fahrzeuge, die batteriegetrieben sind, aber auch der Einsatz von Batterien in Haushalten, stationär, ist ja eine Möglichkeit, wenn sie ansteuerbar sind, Energie zu speichern, wenn zu viel da ist und sie abzugeben, wenn sie gebraucht wird. Das heißt, das wäre ein Riesenpuffer, den wir flexibel einsetzen können. Es reduziert die Notwendigkeit zum Netzausbau, es erfordert intelligente Netze, es ist sozusagen die Verbindung zwischen Energiewende und Digitalisierung. Und da ist die eigentliche Chance in der Elektromobilität nicht nur bei der, sozusagen reinen, beim reinen Fahrzeug, beim, bei der Veränderung der, der, der Antriebstechnik, sondern sozusagen zu einem völlig anderen Energiesystem zu kommen. Und das in einem industrialisierten Land mit 80 Millionen Einwohnern, das ist schon eine enorme Chance für uns. Setzt allerdings voraus, dass wir es schaffen, mehr Fahrzeuge überhaupt auf die Straße zu bekommen. Und das liegt einfach daran zurzeit, dass es keinerlei Kaufanreize gibt für Fahrzeuge, die relativ teuer immer noch sind. Wir sind nicht in der Economy of Scale, sondern haben in der Vergangenheit vor allen Dingen in Forschung investiert. Das ist auch in Ordnung, 1,5 Milliarden Euro. Aber was jetzt kommen muss, sind Incentives und eine Verabredung zum Beispiel von Bund, Ländern und Gemeinden, dass ein bestimmter Prozentsatz äh, der neu beschafften Fahrzeuge der öffentlichen Hand Elektrofahrzeuge sein müssen. Also das sind die beiden Dinge neben Ladeinfrastruktur, die wir schaffen müssen. Wir brauchen Incentives dafür, sonst sind die Fahrzeuge noch zu teuer. Äh, und das Zweite ist, wir brauchen äh, eine Vereinbarung des Staates, dass er sich konzentriert in einem erheblichen Umfeld, Umfang beim Kauf neuer Fahrzeuge auf Elektrofahrzeuge. Dann wird das Ganze schneller gehen, dann werden wir die Zahlen erreichen, dann wird es preiswerter, dann wird übrigens auch die Innovation schneller gehen, denn wir sind ja immer noch nicht bei Reichweiten, die zum Beispiel beim Plug-in-Hybrid ausreichen. Oder wir sind es eben nur bei den Premium-Fahrzeugen und da müssen wir auch besser werden. Ich sammle jetzt mal mit Ihnen gemeinsam. Geben Sie mir... Professionelle Investoren behaupten, dass sie auf über 1000 Milliarden Dollar festsitzen, wo es keine Möglichkeit gibt, sinnvoll zu investieren. Auf der anderen Seite würden wir ungefähr 200 Akkufabriken brauchen, wie Elon Musk jetzt eine baut. Die entsprechende Menge an Photovoltaikfabriken der vorgelagerten Rohstoffindustrie. Warum ändern wir nicht das Kostenoptimum des Systems, dass sich solche Investitionen wesentlich schneller lohnen, damit wir einen Wirtschaftsboom haben, in dem diese professionellen Investoren ihr ganzes festliegendes Geld, über 1000 Milliarden Dollar, in die Wirtschaft hineinstecken, sie wieder Gewinne erwirtschaften können und das Ganze auch bei den kleinen Mann ankommt. Mhm. Vielen Dank. Yes, hi. Um, first of all, thank you very much for having us. Elon, great to be here. And thanks also for asking Tim Urban from Wait But Why to do this fantastic article on Tesla and why Tesla will succeed. My question is the following. Next to electromobility, which is a fundamental part, um, what we do at Rivi is private car sharing on platforms. Sure. So um, to make more use of underutilized products like cars, bringing them on the platform and making use not only of the owner, but also of other people in your vicinity, in the neighborhood, to rent them out while you're not using them. Sure. So my question would be to you, is this something which, which you could consider as also an option to put, for instance, your Tesla on it? Sure. Um, my question is a bit uh, off topic from the electric uh, vehicle part. Um, it's more about if you applied thinking from first principles to the way we structure our societies, what would be the principles you would start at and what would be some of the conclusions you would come to? Okay. Haben wir noch eine Frage? When, when do we start answering them? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, that would be... Okay, hello. So, 
what can you recommend, Mr. Gabriel, uh, to to make uh, to to uh, to increase the s uh, selling? Uh, well, excuse me. Sie können auch gerne. Dafür haben wir auch wirklich einen Dolmetscher hier hinten sitzen. Sie können die Fragen gerne alle auf Deutsch stellen. Er hat ein ein wunderbares Ohr, um die Fragen auch dann okay. zu zu hören. How can you push e-mobility e in Germany? What do you recommend, Mr. Mm -hmm. Musk? So, und ich nehme noch eine Frage. Ähm Darf ich? Dann Gerne. Alles klar. Ja. Ähm, ich probiere es dann gleich auf Deutsch. Ähm, äh, Herr Musk, Sie ähm, waren ja ähm, quasi in, betroffen in Diskussionen, bei denen es um die Frage ging, ähm, wie Public Grants äh, äh, für Research and Innovation, was für eine Rolle das in Ihrem unternehmerischen Erfolg gespielt hat. Und das sind ja Diskussionen, man kann sagen, das ist genau die Rolle von Public Grants, genau zu bewirken, was Sie haben bewirken können. Und Minister Gabriel war selber Teil vieler solcher Diskussionen hier in Deutschland, welche Rolle staatliches Eingreifen, Innovation und so weiter. Wie schätzen Sie das im Nachhinein ein? Was ist Ihre Philosophie, die Sie dazu bewogen hat zu sagen, ich kann diese Grants entgegennehmen und ich kann da was Sinnvolles draus machen und die Patente vielleicht sogar freigeben hinterher? Ähm, ja, danke. <lacht> Um, okay. Um, what about the other questions? <laughs> you should answer every. Okay. So you should I answer them in sequence or backwards? Nein, wir, wir sammeln die Fragen und wollen Sie dann, wir sammeln die Fragen für alle und okay. danach können Sie quasi gezielt sich auch verschiedene Topics raussuchen, um einfach okay. auch zu gucken in der Fülle, dass wir einfach versuchen zu sagen, okay, jetzt haben wir verschiedene Fragen okay. zu dem einen Thema gehabt und dann gucken wir, dass wir auch mehr uns bündeln können und konzentrierter als dieses Antwort-Frage, okay. Antwort-Frage, weil sonst okay. dafür ist unsere Zeit Fair leider enough. nicht so ausreichend. Fair enough. Okay, got it. Um, so, so I should just try to sort of broadly answer the, the set of questions. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I guess maybe I'll start off with the first principles approach to uh, societal, you know, how would you do, do it differently? I think, um, I think probably uh, direct democracy is uh, better than representative democracy. And so if you're trying to represent the will of the people, it would be better to have direct votes, which were not possible in the, in the old days because you had, you know, uh, you had to mail things around and the information moved very slowly. But in, uh, in an electronic society where information moves instantly, you can, re you can represent very directly the will of the people. And I think this diminishes the ability of special interests to influence things in a way that is contrary to the will of the people. So. Uh, I think that's what I would, I would say is probably good. Also, uh, the laws, are in, laws have an um, infinite lifetime. So you have to, I think, or it's probably a good idea to uh, have something in the, in the voting system that accounts for uh, the, the infinite lifetime of laws and the sort of inertial effect of laws. So perhaps it would be good for all, all rules to have an inherent sunset provision. So, they would automatically expire unless they get re-voted as being correct. Um, and then uh, maybe have, it, ha have a hysteresis where if, um, in order for something to become a law, maybe it requires 60% vote, but at any point 40% or more can remove the law. Um, this sounds sort of anarchist, I suppose, but I know. <laughs> I'm kind of pro-anarchist. <laughs> Um, so um, I would say try it, in, try it in the U.S. and then we will follow. You know, <laughs> I, I think gen generally fewer rules are better than more rules. Um, yeah, but um, you know, that's that's my rough guess at you know if if, if you had to read you know recompile on on democracy, how would you do it to better represent the true will of the people, which I think is, is the intent of a democracy. So. Um, then, uh, for uh, you know, for electric vehicles and um, CO2, I mean, the, the the fundamental issue we have here is uh, a, a tragedy of the commons. Um, if it's e economics 101, when you have an unpriced externality, the market system will not function correctly. And so, um, the market system is just a it's just a set of it, it's it's just prices are just information. So when the, price, when the price information is false, then the wrong behavior will occur, obviously, in a market economy. Um, now, 
very often when there is government intervention, the, the government intervention increases the error in the prices. Um, so generally, as a general rule, government intervention is best to, to be avoided. But there are cases where government intervention decreases the error. Um, and since we know that the price of CO2 should not be zero, um, any action to increase the, the price of CO2 will reduce the error in the market system. Um, so it, it will result in better behavior. The, so that's, that's the thing that's, that's important to occur here. If, if CO2 is correctly priced, and this is, of course, the correct price is a debatable proposition, then, uh, th th then, then no subsidies are needed. No incentives are needed for electric vehicles. No incentives are needed for uh, battery storage or clean energy production if the CO2 if CO2 is correctly priced. Since we set a price of zero, which is wrong, then we try to make up for it with all these incentives and subsidies. They're not as good as simply pricing CO2. That would be the right thing to do. But in, in the absence of pricing CO2, you know, incentives and subsidies are, are the next best thing. You know, that's the, that's the long and short of it. Um, and we could say, like, you know, where, what is the... What is the maximum part per million of CO2 that we would consider acceptable? Um, you know, every year, the, the CO2 ppm ratchets up. It's like a, it's like a ratchet. Um, so it's kind of like being on, on, on the rack, you know, it's like the stretching rack, the little torture device. You know, probably, you know, you, put, you got on the rack at first, it doesn't feel that bad, you know. Crack it up a few notches, kind of stretches out your back, not too bad. But then you keep, you, keep not, you keep ratcheting further and further, and it becomes excruciating. So that's where, we, that's the thing, that's where we're headed. Um, so you have to say, what is the, uh, what's the maximum PPM that we would consider acceptable for Earth? Is it 500, 600, 800? Um, that, that sets our, our bank account of, of carbon that's acceptable in, in, the, in, the, in the atmosphere. And then you have to say, well, what's the, what's the acid level in the ocean that's acceptable? And if, you, if you we can just agree on what those numbers are, then we can price that, that boundary accordingly. I think we'll find it's a very high price. And currently, we're selling it for zero. Could you answer the question? That there were, were two questions. First of all, how could, could we create a framework where the international money will go into climate-friendly and hopefully social-friendly investments. That was the first question I remember. So there is a lot of money around the globe, uh, but it will not flow into the real market or the real industry or pr the products which we need to save the climate. And the second question was, was what would be your advice to Germany to raise the, the numbers of um, electric cars and to be faster and better uh, in the electric mobility. I'm well, not sure if we can sure. do, but you yeah, should no, explain. Absolutely. The, 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 actually, the, the best thing to do is just to, to, um, to, to either put, put a, a penalty on carbon CO2 creation um, or next best, not as good, is to provide an incentive for electric vehicles um, and for sustainable energy generation. Um, the, the, the greater the incentive, the faster the good behavior will happen. Um, now, of course, the, the, the great irony here is that, of course, in the long term, we will have to go to sustainable energy generation and sustainable transport, because we will simply run out of hydrocarbons to burn. So we know we, with certainty that this is the end point. The, the question is just, do you want to get there how much CO2 do you want to put into the atmosphere before we get there? Like, we can take it all out and put it in the atmosphere. I think that would be quite bad. Um, or we could put a, sm a small incremental amount or a large incremental amount. It's just entirely dependent upon how you set the economics of carbon-producing actions versus non-carbon-producing actions. So it's, it's somewhat of a continuum. Um, the, the, the greater the incentive, the better. Um, I mean, for, for a lot of countries, they're sort of 
aimed at around a 10% incentive for electric vehicles. Um, I think that's certainly helpful. So it's currently, currently nothing in Germany. So hopefully anything more than nothing would be good. <laughs> And the, the, no, the, the question isn't answered. Uh, what can we do to bring money from the international finance markets to, you know? Oh no, that was that was the answer. To <laughs> no, but, but that's not that's. But I would say, therefore, I would be completely against. It's not the responsibility of the state or the normal people to give tax incentives to people who want to make money on the finance market. That's not our obligation. No, they have, to, they have to take the risk of an investment. That's not the obligation of the state. And I think he, yes. maybe he, he, he thinks about different ideas, but to give incentives for consumers to buy cars, electric cars, that's okay. Sure. But to think about what can we do for the rich people in the finance market, that they will invest the money in technical innovations which we want to have, that's a crazy idea, I think so. I, I would not agree. Yeah, no, but if, 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 you, if you make the... They cost, they cost us some years ago right, right. billions of euros. I mean, they should I, pay I, back, I, then it's okay, then I will give incentives. Yeah, I don't think anyone's sort of arguing in favor of making hedge fund managers even richer. Um, it, it's, it's basically just that if, in, in order for, to get them to invest, th th they have to see that there's going to be a return on um, sustainable energy. And, th and then, then the, the, they will automatically do it. Um, so that there won't be any need to coerce them or anything. If they see that they can get a good return on clean energy stuff, then they will they will take take that action. Yeah. Lassen Sie uns gerne noch mal erstmal hier im Saal ein paar Fragen noch sammeln. Wir haben die Mikrofone auch schon verteilt. Hier drüben auch noch. Wir fangen mal bei Ihnen an. Hi. Uh, is this, uh, hi, Elon. Uh, it's an honor to be able to ask you this personally. Um, and before. Uh, Probably before I ask my question, I should say that I'm against uh, regulation in innovation and research overall. Um, right. But reading your comments on artificial intelligence research, um, I get a feeling that um, you uh, you want us you want the researchers to be very careful about what we do, right. but also perhaps be regulated in some form. So if I compare that to research at SpaceX, um, is the research at SpaceX regulated at all? And if so, um, is it enough or is it too much? And who sort of uh, keeps check of that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, um, all, all transport is, is regulated. Oh, sorry, you don't want to do the queue. <laughs> we, want, we want to okay. collect the, the, the questions. All right, all right, sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> Weil sonst you haben so viele, it, uh, wir okay. haben so viele Fragen, dass es eigentlich sinnvoller ist, wir versuchen es mal im Pool auch, dass wir noch ein paar mehr, gerne. Alle diejenigen, die jetzt schon ein Mikrofon haben, die würde ich gerne erstmal der Reihe nach äh, dran nehmen und danach gucken, dass wir vielleicht noch ein paar weitere Fragen möglichst schnell auch wegen unserer eilenden Zeit noch hier beantwortet bekommen. Gerne. Guten Tag, mein Name ist Christian Gernemann. Ein Tesla habe ich schon. Und ich habe festgestellt, dass es Leute gibt, die einen, einen, sich einen Tesla leisten können, aber einen Tesla nicht kennen. Dazu gehört auch der Präsident von Schalke, Herr Tönnies. Ähm, brauchen Sie mehr Kunden? Und ähm, wer wäre der Ansprechpartner, wenn ich Ihnen helfen würde, ähm, mehr Kunden zu besorgen? Okay. <lacht> da drüben haben wir noch ein Mikrofon. Um. Hi, Elon. Um. I wanted, I'm Minde, I'm from the Infinity Project, and um, I wanted to ask this, uh, while migration to other planets is exciting and it would prevent us from a planetary catastrophe, it may not prevent us from a strong artificial intelligence. That's true. Um, and I, if I believe that I have a solution to this problem, what recommendations would you give and how would you be interested in helping out with this problem? Definitely okay, interested. Thanks. Nice. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you. Could you use Warten the Sie. mic? <laughs> Warten Sie, ohne Mikrofon hat es wirklich wenig Zweck. Wir lassen erst noch mal bitte vielleicht noch mal diejenigen, die jetzt ein Mikrofon auch haben, noch mal ganz kurz zu Wort kommen und dann gerne. Yes, hi. One question about sustainability um, since um, CO2 is not the only resource involved. Let's think to the extreme that cars uh, run on electricity throughout the world. Um, how much do you do or think about the uh, consequences regarding other resources? Because, I mean, 
might have even bigger consequences regarding chemicals, acids in the oceans and stuff like that. Do you think it's even possible? Okay, um, so one more question. Um, there are many ways to reduce and save CO2, and cars and transportation are just, it's just one of them. Um, so why precisely did you decide for cars and not for something like uh, the heating industry, for example, where there's also a lot of CO2 emissions? Thanks. Okay, ich nehme noch zwei, drei Fragen. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, sure. Uh, well, I guess uh, there's a good question, uh, that last question on uh, why not say heating, uh, but really uh, th there's a general, the, the general problem is uh, producing energy or producing um, electricity, which is sort of like the most general purpose form of energy in a way that does not fundamentally change the chemical constituency of the atmosphere or oceans, um, so sort of a you know, sustainable energy production. If, as soon as you have sustainable energy production, um, and, and if that's combined with stationary storage um, and electric transport, um, that can cover all forms of, um, all energy needs. Because I mean, roughly in a sort of very uh, top level view, um, about a third of, of all energy is electricity, about a third is used for, for heating, and about a third is used for transport. Um, but th there's enough uh, energy coming to us from the sun to actually support all three areas. Um, there's really an amazing amount of energy that comes from the sun. It's one gigawatt per square kilometer, um, which is mind-blowingly huge. Um, and, and actually, if you think about it, we, the, the Earth is almost entirely solar powered already um, in the sense that uh, we would be a frozen ice ball at a few degrees above absolute zero if not for the sun. Uh, the sun powers our entire system of precipitation and almost the entire ecosystem. Um, and then there's, uh, uh, then there's the energy needed to power civilization, which to us seems big, but actually to the sun, it's very tiny. Um, so, uh, as I said, one, a gigawatt per square kilometer is a super giant amount of energy. Um, and at 20% efficient solar panels, that's 200 megawatts per square kilometer. Um, and um, I mean, what's interesting is if you look at most, at the, the sort of clearance area of, of uh, most nuclear power stations, um, you can generate more energy from solar panels than you can from, or, than, than from that nuclear power station, which is quite amazing. Um, so, uh, you know, all, all you need is five square kilometers to get to a gigawatt of power, um, which is a, a tiny area. Usually the clear area is much greater than that. Um, yeah, so, so no, no problem to generate all the energy we need for electricity, for heating, for transport uh, from solar with some a contribution from wind and geothermal and tidal, no problem at all. Um, we just have to do it. Um, and, um, and then we, we need to stop effectively subsidizing uh, burning fossil fuels um, by, by placing, yeah. So. And let's see, on the strong AI, man, I wish there was some solution to that. I don't know if what, what we can do about strong AI. I, I mean, there are potentially some scenarios in, in, an, I, you know, in an AI apocalypse which only affect Earth because of the optimization function of the AI, uh, but hopefully we don't face such a situation. Um, and then with respect to uh, regulation, uh, yeah, yeah, SpaceX and Tesla are, are highly regulated uh, today. Uh, you know, Tesla's regulated by the uh, Department of Transport in, in multiple different countries, um, and still Tesla is able to innovate in a regulatory structure. SpaceX is regulated by the FAA in the US um, and by the 
uh, Air Force, um, and um, is, is it, and by NASA, uh, effectively, so and still able to innovate. So, I think a lot of AI researchers are afraid, like if there's a regulator that will somehow stop them from making progress. Uh, this is not true. Um, it, most, uh, in fact, every everything where where there's a danger to the public, there is regulation. So there's regulation in food and pharmaceuticals and transport and, and, and all of these areas, uh, there's significant progress uh, made. So I don't think regulation of AI uh, is going to stop progress in AI, but it may, it may stop us from doing some foolish things in, in AI. Um, and, and it's quite, I would say, virtually a certainty that in the long term, AI will be regulated. I would say almost a certainty. Um, the question is really, is that regulation proactive or reactive? Um, his, historically, regulation has been reactive. Um, and in, in taking the car industry as an example, even when the evidence is very clear that there should be regulation, in for, for example, for seat belts, seat belt regulation was fought for 10 or 20 years by the big car companies. And they said that if you put seat belts in cars, people won't want to buy cars, and it's going to add all this cost. So even though the data was unequivocal that huge numbers of people were dying and being seriously injured because of lack of seat belts, the car industry still refused to put seat belts in cars. Um, only eventually, after the evidence and the number of the death count was overwhelming, eventually they put seat belts in cars. And people kept buying cars. No problem. Did I miss anything? And sorry, you were. Sie müssen sich ein Mikrofon auch. Holen Sie sich das Mikrofon sonst einmal ganz kurz. Oder lassen Sie erstmal kurz der Dame, die das Mikrofon jetzt hat, einmal kurz die Chance. Und danach gehen wir es einmal rüber. My name is Andera, happy Tesla driver. Um, I have a quite different question actually. Obviously, you're following your passion to make a change. Um, and I learned you built your own school for, for kids um, in your hometown. So my question is on education. What is your idea um, on how to teach kids actually um, to gain, like or get a passion to make a change? So how, how do we teach them? What do we do to, uh, need to do to, um, to inspire them to build like be entrepreneurs or build digital products um, or companies. So I would love to hear your ideas on that. Sure. Well, I think mm -hmm. Hello again. I just wanted to ask you, if you had some wishes free towards German politics in terms of e-mobility, what would you wish for? But you have only three wishes. Okay. <laughs> I will count. I will count. Okay. One, yeah. two, three wishes. <laughs> Hi, Elon, uh, and thanks for okay. taking your time and inspiring us all here. Um, my question is the following. You're the CEO to two of the probably most important companies t in the history of mankind. Um, it seems like on the side, uh, you create innovative transportation concepts like the Hyperloop. You build Solar City. you bring battery packages into people's houses. Um, and obviously, you somehow find the time to read a lot and, and learn a lot of new stuff. I think the question that is on most people's mind uh, is how, how does he do it? Like, I assume your day has 24 hours as well. So what is your daily routine? How, how can you focus on so many different and obviously important things? Uh, thanks. Today, okay. he has, today he has less time because he's here. And noch eine Frage da drüben. Erstmal ganz kurz, da müssen wir Sie nochmal zu Wort kommen lassen. Ja, hallo. Eine kurze Frage zum Thema Zusammenarbeit zwischen Tesla und deutschen Herstellern. Ähm, ist denn geplant, dass äh, Porsche Mission E auch am Supercharger laden können wird? Oder wie stellen Sie sich vor, wird der solche wahnsinnig guten Ladezeiten erreichen können? Danke. All right, should I start answering? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. You could start with uh, education um, or with the... Sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, we, 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 we're, we're totally cool with people with other companies using our supercharger uh, infrastructure. There's no intent to create a walled garden or to create some uh, sort of, uh, you know, 
you know, a protectionist thing. It, it's basically the only requirements for using our supercharged network are that it, the car needs to be able to take the high power level, because uh, if, it's, if it's really low power level, it's going to hog the spot and sit there for too long. Um, so it's got to be able to be charged fast. Um, and then there just needs to be proportionate uh, uh, payment for, so however much the other manufacturers' cars are using the network, the, they should just pay that proportion, which I think is pretty fair. Um, and they actually, a uh, CEO of one uh, European car company, not a German car company, has approached us recently about doing exactly that, and we're super supportive of anyone that wants to do that. Uh, and if, if other car companies want to also create networks and we can have a shared network, that'd be cool. Um, and we're for, for anything that's going to promote the future of electric vehicles. So anything we can do to be genuinely supportive, we want to, we want to do that. Um, in terms of uh, the wishes, um, I think the, you know, anything we can do to address the fact that there's, that, that, co that CO2 is being done for free, you know, you know, there's, there's always like budgets to deal with and, um, and whatnot, but anything to kind of even the playing field for uh, CO2 pr production versus non-CO2 producing cars. Um, you know, so, I don't know, sometimes like, like a, a, a 10% subsidy. I mean, the best thing, like I said, the best thing would be to price CO2. That is by far the best thing. And then no subsidies or anything are needed for electric vehicles. But then people will find that the CO2 producing things are a lot more expensive than they realized. And so, I don't know which one is worse. I mean, perfectly, I would say, if my number one wish would be price CO2 correctly, and then the good things will happen. Yeah. I'll just take one wish. That'll do it. <laughs> That's it. And vielleicht abschließend noch Wunsch zwei und drei. Oh, geez, two and three. Um, uh, geez. Uh, well, if I got wish one, I think it would be great. Um, wouldn't really need anything more. Um, sorry? I, I can't hear you. Uh, sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, I had to, this is great food in Germany, actually. Uh, so um, I had this great kebab yeah. last night, actually. <laughs> yeah. in, this, in this ministry, we are happy if a guest has only one wish. I mean, it, we are very happy. But that's it. I mean, I'd be, you know, and I, I think, um, yeah, that's it. I don't really have anything more. Um, ich weiß, dass hier im Saal ganz viele noch ganz viele Wünsche haben, nämlich auch noch Ihre Frage zu stellen. Leider, und das werden Sie bestimmt auch alle verstehen, muss der Minister aufgrund der aktuellen politischen Lage... Ich würde trotzdem gerne Sie zwei gerne. Antworten geben. Wir, ja. haben, wir haben einen, okay. nein, zur Ehrlichkeit gehört, wir haben einen Konflikt mit Tesla bei der Ladeinfrastruktur. Es gibt in Europa eine Verabredung darüber, dass wir eine einheitliche Ladeinfrastruktur ähm, beginnend beim Stecker in Europa haben wollen, damit es keine Unterschiede in der E-Mobility innerhalb Europas gibt. Tesla hat aber bereits ein eigenes System. Und for the time being versuchen wir Lösungen zu finden, dass... Bitte? Ja, es ist trotzdem so, dass der, die Verabredung in Europa den Stecker nicht ermöglicht. Das, das jedenfalls... Sie können ja alle das, das auch, Sie sollten Politiker werden, wir lassen Leute auch nie ausreden. <lacht> äh, also, ist doch gut. Meister, Meister, ich würde trotzdem gerne ausreden, das ist hier so üblich, das ist ganz schreckliche Regel, aber so machen wir das hier. Also, das heißt, da gibt es einen ungelösten Konflikt, den wir derzeit dadurch lösen, dass beide angeboten werden können. Und das Thema mit der kompletten Bepreisung von CO2 in der Autoindustrie wird in Europa Schritt für Schritt gehen. Warum? Weil natürlich Europa mit seinen klassischen Automobilunternehmen auf tra traditionelle Antriebswege äh, äh, konzentriert ist und wenn wir nicht zu gigantischen Problemen kommen wollen im Bereich von Strukturabbrüchen bei Beschäftigung, werden wir das Schritt für Schritt machen müssen. Wir müssen schneller werden. In dieser Zeit, damit wir überhaupt besser werden, werden wir die zweitbeste Lösung nutzen und die erste auch. Wir werden CO2 Schritt für Schritt in Europa entweder reduzieren oder, wenn man es nicht reduziert, teuer machen. Nur zur Wahrheit gehört eben auch, dass das eine Entwicklung in Europa ist, die sozusagen evolutionär sich vollzieht und nicht disruptiv, weil ich jedenfalls nicht verantworten könnte, 
und meine Kollegen in Frankreich, Italien und den anderen Fahrzeugherstellenden Nationen, dass wir so tun, als hätte das keine Beschäftigungsauswirkungen. Und deswegen glaube ich, ist der Weg, den Europa jetzt geht, beides zu tun, Incentives zu ermöglichen und CO2 teurer zu machen, ist das ein vernünftiger Weg. Man soll nicht so tun, als gäbe es die Probleme nicht, nur weil wir uns hier so schön gegenseitig beklatschen. Herr Gabel, ich, ich weiß leider, und das finde ich auch immer wieder wunderbar an Ihnen, dass Sie wirklich ja auch gerne noch diskutieren, aber von der Seite kriege ich auch das Zeichen, Sie müssen... Ich muss das erklären. Ich finde nichts, ich spreche nichts dagegen, wenn Elon Musk nicht sauer ist, dass ich äh, gehe. Wir haben heute... Wie Sie alle wissen, ein, sie freut sich schon, dass ich nicht mehr dazwischen rede und nur mit Herrn Musk reden kann. <lacht> Finde ich wirklich sympathisch, dass Sie es gleich zeigen. Also, äh, wir, ich, haben wir haben heute ein Riesenthema, das wissen Sie in Deutschland, die Frage, wie wir, welche Entscheidungen wir treffen, um mit einer Million Flüchtlingen in diesem Jahr klarzukommen. Darüber wird jetzt gleich bei uns beraten. Deswegen würde ich, ja, würd ich Sie gerne mit Herrn Musk noch ein bisschen alleine lassen, denn das... Den Beifall nehme ich Ihnen übel, klar. <laughs> Aber ich verstehe ihn. Thanks a lot for visiting us. Sure. It's, it's a great honor. And I hope that we can realize some of your ideas and projects in Germany. Um, and whenever you come to Europe, visit us and let's discuss. Also about the gigawatt battery factory. Uh, we need some of these ideas uh, to promote innovation in our country. Thanks a lot. All right, thank you. We had this, uh, this refugee meeting there. What's that? Can I have it? <laughs> Do you still have time? Um, I, I think so. Do we? We're going to look at the room, if we have time. We have a few minutes. Okay. Yes, we have. Okay, then I would like to ask you again. Yeah, we have to really use it. If you have the microphone, so that the room is understood. And ask him the question. Mein Name ist Sven Minetzke und ich bin auch begeisterter Tesla-Fahrer und Model S-Besitzer. Und ich habe die Frage, weil das Tesla Model S ja im Moment wirklich für viele unerschwinglich ist, wie weit ist die Entwicklung vom Model 3 vorangeschritten? Wann werden wir es voraussichtlich auf dem Markt sehen? Weil in Deutschland die Hersteller, ja, die beschäftigen sich ja noch nicht mit bezahlbaren Elektro, mit rein elektrisch fahrenden Fahrzeugen. Wer hat das Mikrofon denn jetzt von Ihnen? Okay. Ich muss immer noch mal gucken. Can, can I just answer the questions? Yeah. Uh, my okay. preference. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh. Yeah, so, so the, I'll have to answer them rapid fire. So the, with the Model 3, I mean, I'll go, if, if we could bring the Model 3 out tomorrow, we absolutely would. Um, it's it's going to happen as fast as we possibly can. Um, our expectation right now is about two, two, two and a half years for the Model 3. We've got to get the Gigafactory operational and the Model 3 uh, production line operational at the same time. So Giga, Gigafactory is a necessary precursor because of the cost of the battery pack before we can have the Model 3 uh, in production. So it is tricky timing. Um, we've got to balance that at Tesla internally. Uh, but it's going to be as fast as we possibly can, two, two and a half years. So. So a quick point and a question. Uh, first point is in Europe we have very, very high uh, fuel duty. Uh, which is kind of also a tax on CO2, if you look at it like that. And the second question is, you may be aware That's of... That's true. It could yeah. be higher, but yeah, I agree with you. Uh, yeah. But it's, 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 it's too, it, it sounds high, but it should be higher. Yeah. I, maybe you're right. Yeah. Yeah. And the second, you heard of Flight Path 2050. And so this is a European initiative to... Man, 2050. I hope yeah. we're all around to freaking talk in 2050. It's a little long, it's a long distance. May civilization still be around. So Airbus, <laughs> is, Airbus is playing around with making little uh, electric aircraft that got a range of like an hour. I think it's great what they're doing with the e-fan. So the question is, you've got an aerospace I, company yeah. and a car company specializing in battery technologies. So when are you going to be building a new electric airliner? Oh, man. <laughs> I got a lot of fish, I got a lot, a lot of fish frying right now. Um, I'd love to be working on electric aircraft. I think um, all transport, with the ironic exception of rockets, will go electric. Uh, so I think what Airbus is doing uh, with electric aircraft is really smart. And I think they will be very happy with any, it's, it's, and any investment that they make in electrification of aircraft. They will be very happy they did that down the road. It's absolutely the right move. 
Um, so I think it's very encouraging what they're doing. Hopefully Boeing and other uh, aircraft companies uh, start doing the same thing, because we, 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 we need electrification of aircraft as well as of cars. Uh, I mean, if, if I wasn't super strung out, I would for sure be doing electric aircraft. Yeah. I have targeted. Elin, <laughs> just, just one short question. We're addressing the car sharing mobility from before. Obviously, there are huge inroads now from Uber, Google, etc., who do sure. very smart technology, and ma they have their mass departments who understand where you guys are going to go from A to B and then pick up other people while you go on it. You obviously do a very beautiful model with the S model, and then down the road you go probably for the commoditization of cars. Would you consider car sharing, like what we do with Drive as a startup, a worthwhile endeavor, or would you put Teslas on it? I mean, f from a Tesla standpoint, we we've, we've just got to build cars and try to not lose money. Like, that's our goal. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it was like uh, aspiration. <laughs> so, so you could offset the costs. Like, the Tesla model is quite expensive. I mean, go ahead, I mean, go ahead and buy them, no problem. <laughs> um, but just remember, like, we've got a big factory and we've got to pay the bills. Sure. So. It's actually private cars, so everybody <laughs> here could actually do it. Also, ich würde leider, leider okay. Gottes, aber das machen wir jetzt hier an dieser Stelle, wir beenden jetzt unsere Veranstaltung Wirtschaft für morgen, <lacht> weil leider nämlich der Wirtschaftsminister gar nicht mehr dabei sein kann, weil er schon weggegangen ist. Ich würde gerne noch mal, dass Sie unserem internationalen Gast, dem Sie bestimmt auch jetzt gleich noch die eine oder andere Frage stellen können, auch gerne dann auch noch mal Fragen stellen. Ähm, aber ich würde sagen, thank you for being with us. Thank you for your great comments. And uh, ich möchte gerne sagen, wenn Sie auch noch mal die anderen Interviewpartner sich anschauen wollen oder dieses Interview auch noch mal in aller Ruhe sich angucken möchten, haben Sie die Gelegenheit in der Mediathek vom Bundeswirtschaftsministerium. Ihnen erstmal vielen Dank. Wir beenden es jetzt hiermit offiziell und danach ist Elon Musk bestimmt noch für die eine oder andere zur Verfügung. Vielen, vielen Dank. Danke. Ja.